this was the debate that we really needed. And this was the debate where I thought this could break or make Ron DeSantis as much as Iowa. Because Gavin Newsom is, everyone's like, oh, but Gavin is such a good debater. (gasps) He's such a good debater, everybody, with the debates. He's so good. How how often have you ever heard that, Kane? Uh, Every time. Every time. He's so good. Gavin Newsom is such a good debater. You you heard that over and over again. Okay, well, he he has a lot of baggage. But, you know, a good attitude can get over baggage. We've learned that. Uh, a good attitude can get over a lot of stuff, right? If you're, if you seem like you're nice. And so that's kind of, I don't, I, I don't know who prepped. Well, you can tell Nikki Freed prepped him because holy cow. I, I mean, at one point in the debate, I was like, who prepped him? For real, who prepped this guy? It was one of the worst. I, oh man, it was bad. He, he got beaten so bad. He has, they have been having a meltdown all day today. And they had a meltdown last night. And his busy buddy, Real Housewives of Poop Map, decided to, like, get mad. And they intervened. They were, it was his wife. She was the one who threw the towel in last night. Every friend I have who was there was like, oh, my gosh. She was up and immediately in people's faces. She was the one who threw the towel in for Gav. Because he was mercilessly beaten mercilessly beaten and at some I mean I knew this was going to be over as soon as it started and I got the temperature I'm like oh my gosh this is over it's already over it's already done I mean you didn't even need to just you know repeatedly dunk on him the way that he did um I mean it was just something all right so it was a really fascinating contrast between the choices that we have the choices that we're facing I also have maybe perhaps a less popular opinion I think this is a debate that we've wanted kind of on the right in some ways. And we did get it a little bit. As often as the front runner was quoted on stage for the Republican primary, it's like he was there. I'm just saying. And you know I'm right. You can get mad at me, but you're like, damn it, Dana, you're right. See, that's why we're friends. This was the debate that Americans wanted, though. It was like I said, it was like watching a seasoned boxer mercilessly beat a character from Lazy Town to death. And at some point, you just kind of winced whenever Newsom opened his mouth because you're like, oh, my gosh, why? You're going to get murdered again. I mean, it's just it's going to be so bad. Why are you why are you still doing this? I mean, he just kept he kept doing it. And didn't couldn't you tell at some point that he uh, I mean, you really could tell that he was frustrated you could tell that Newsom was trying to uh, tweak DeSantis. And DeSantis was just like, yeah, I'm not going to get tweaked. Not going to happen. So like, he, he, was there, he was there to chew gum and kick ass, and he was all out of gum. I mean, it was like they live. Go ahead, you got to turn my fair go up today, man. Well, what were you doing? Well, you got I have it? come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. <laughs> and I'm all out of bubble gum. He was all out of bubble gum last night. So uh, he brought the show and tell. The poop map was just one thing. I mean, right in the very beginning, uh, Hannity started off with, and at some point, I think Hannity was like, what do I do? Uh, He started off and asking about all the people that are leaving California. And every time he asked Newsom a question, Newsom's just like, argle, bargle, bargle, and he just wouldn't answer it. That's all he did. He just would not, he would not answer the question. How many times, how many questions was he asked? I I mean, I, I stopped keeping count. He just wouldn't answer a single question it wasn't going to happen and so he got I mean and then all and then you had this stunner audio soundbite nine this was a real stunner uh don't you say her name wrong listen why the kids were locked out of school for so long joe biden is in the pocket of the teachers union and so is kamala harris that's why they fought by the way, school it's not openings kamala when, harris. when he Shame came in you. there it's kamala when they had harris, that in there. ron it's kamala harris biden came harris, into office Madam and he Vice brought in President the teacher to union to be oh able to do Stop all insulting. these different oh, things to try to keep the schools closed oh, so sir it's it's ma'am sir it's ma'am oh my gosh that's true that's exactly what it was. It was exactly, that's exactly what it sounded like. Excuse oh. me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. That, that I thought was real lame from Gav. That was a lame one, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a lame one. Because he just, he just, it's, it's coma. But he might actually, well, audio sound by 13. He might want to maybe say that to Joe, too. Listen to how Joe pronounces it. City and state leaders, but as Kamala said, we're uh, we're well, all heck, closely monitoring so the storm. Kamala, that's like a whole different thing. 
United States Madam Vice President to you. Argle, bargle, bargle. I just, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, I, 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 it was there. Now, now wait a minute. There, this was also one of my favorite moments. We're going to get the silly stuff out of the way first because we deserve it, guys. We have schlepped through this. I watched this debate last night and I was marking all this audio all the way up until the, and getting all this ready to the wee hours. You will indulge me because I was in my element. It was a lot of fun. Debates have been so boring. I love that there was no studio audience. Screw the studio audience. You don't need to be in there. It's better for all of us. Audio soundbite six. This was hysterical. Listen. At one point, tried to say that California was the freedom state. I just kind of laugh, like you're locking people down, you're doing all this. Uh, but then I thought about it. You know, California does have freedoms uh, that some people don't, uh, that other states don't. You have the freedom to defecate in public in California. You have the freedom to pitch a tent on Sunset Boulevard. You have the freedom to create a homeless encampment under a freeway and even light it on fire. You have the, the freedom to uh, have an open air drug market and use drugs. You have a freedom, if you're an illegal alien, to get all these taxpayer benefits. So, so those no are freedoms. Did you They're see not his the freedoms our founding Bob? fathers envisioned, but they have contributed the to the destruction can. of the quality of life in California. And the results speak for themselves. People are leaving the state because they have so, failed in addressing the This was the so homeless. good. So everyone has always been like, Ron DeSantis' expressions, though. Well, now you see what they were made for. He had the ability to be just a savage smartass. And then his eyes were, it was like Ralphie from A Christmas Story. His big, giant eyes. And just like, well, you have the freedom to do this, and then you have the freedom to light it on fire. And then, you have, and then Gavin Newsom... He got so mad. Did you guys see this? I stopped this clip. I can't tell you how many times I put that. There was a, a, there's like a three second section of this clip where he pinches in the corners of his mouth so dang tight, like a coin purse. And then he just bobs his head real quick back and forth. He's so mad. And then his cheeks got a little red. I'm just saying. You can tell it. He was ticked. There were so many really really insightful moments and here's one that I wanted to get this one made me mad it made some of my friends mad audio soundbite eight because he touched on this issue with firearms listen to this you, you had one of the most worst mass shootings in American history Parkland 17 kids were gunned down lives lost 17 others lives torn asunder you had a, a young girl by the name of Jamie Gutenberg whose father pleaded with you to do something about it and you know what you did? They did the exact opposite. You made it easier for felons to get guns without background checks, without any training. These people pleaded with the parents and the families to get tough on gun safety. And again, you made it easier for felons. So I don't understand this. And, and I will say that the father that he mentioned is a father that has so horrifically abused me online. I, I, I mean, I understand when you, you, when you lose someone, but that doesn't entitle you to try to victimize other individuals. Um, and, and use that as an excuse for your political zeal. I don't see it from Ryan Petty. I don't see it from Andy Pollack. I don't see it from the Borges family. Uh, and those are all families that I've gotten to know and become very close to. Uh, the, some of the other families, Parkland families, were livid over this last night. Uh, first off, it's all, I don't understand his claim that, that the Florida governor made it easy for felons to get guns. Uh, I know a lot of you out there watching understand this, but for maybe those who don't, you have uh, federal law, uh, the federal law that deals with, the section of federal law that deals with firearms and prohibited possessors. Prohibited possessor meaning someone who has been adjudicated or uh, a judge made a determination upon someone in a court of law that their actions willfully undertaken, they're too violent, they pose a danger to themselves or others, therefore they are a prohibited possessor. Now we can have a conversation about different levels of you know, what constitutes prohibition, etc. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the law as it is. And he does not have the law, no governor has the law, to undermine 18 U.S.C. subsection, you know, 1922A through Z. Uh, I mean, that's the whole section doesn't go all the way to Z, but that's the whole section that deals with uh, firearms and uh, regulation of who can possess, who can't. Even interstate sales, which a lot of the gun control people try to hide behind, those are still federally regulated, and anyone who says otherwise doesn't know enough about the law to talk about it. They're still federally regulated because there exists a federal penalty if you violate the law. If you are a prohibited possessor and you buy a firearm in your state of residence or in your state not where you're not a resident, 
that's a crime. If you're a prohibited possessor and you still are trying to possess a firearm, that is a crime. It is not a loophole. That's like saying drunk driving is a loophole. It's not. It's a crime. And it's still federally regulated. And there's a federal penalty because there is a federal regulation on the activity. So stop saying that there's any aspect of this that is not regulated by the federal damn government. It's simply not true. And him getting up there and saying this stuff is what's asinine. California's had more mass casualty incidents than Florida. I mean, and some of the most recent ones as well. And despite the fact that they, all of their gun control that they have, they still have a very, very high homicide rate as it involves illegally possessed firearms. So I'm trying to figure out how, as governor of Florida, to go with, this, to go with Newsom's claim, DeSantis made it easier somehow for felons to, did he undermine federal law? And then I would love for Newsom, that would have been my question. I would love for you, Governor Newsom, to explain to me how, as Florida governor, in my capacity, I somehow undermined federal law. Go ahead and explain to everyone the process of how that would happen. Just embarrass him, because that's ridiculous. But I also think, in part, Newsom was trying to push his buttons so he could get a, a negative reaction out of him and it would make DeSantis look bad and DeSantis didn't take the, he didn't take the bait he didn't take the bait I know that I have been a lot of the gun control people that's what they've tried to do to me they'll say things they would say things about me they would say things about me as a mother they would go after my kids they would say all this horrible stuff to try to get a rise out of me it's bait and you just have to realize you go back to and I'm not saying this to be a smart aleck I'm actually I think it's good life advice you go back to the roadhouse school of dealing with conflict uh, Dalton School of Dealing with Conflict. It is it is a string of words that are prescribed to elicit a specific reaction from you, and you are the power element. You can choose to empower that those that statement or not, and you have to make a choice not to. Some being emotional about it is weakness. Looking at it logically and r- knowing when to react and when not to react, that's strength. And Newsom was trying to get a rise out of him, and it wasn't working. But it made it actually hurt and made a lot of Parkland families mad because when you go back and look at this uh, with Florida, it was Scott Israel who it was the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission when they got all gathered together and they had uh, and it was a very bipartisan. I mean, seriously bipartisan: Democrats, Republicans, Independents, all of them. Uh, you had lawmakers, parents, security experts. Uh, Sheriff J.D. Grud was on it. Uh, my friends uh, Ryan Petty and Pollock were on this commission. And they all sat. They looked through everything. They were trying to figure out what the breakdown was and how to prevent it from ever happening again. And what they discovered was stunning. In Scott Israel's department there in Broward County, those officers had not been kept up to date with active response training. That came out in the commission. Did you know that? Or was the, was the media too busy throwing up gun control activists on screen, impugning the character of law-abiding gun owners to actually cover that very important fact? Because that's what happened in Broward. So they discovered that, uh, that they had not even been kept up with the current, they were supposed to, but they hadn't. They were so, Scott Israel was such an unpopular sheriff, the police union voted unanimously, no confidence in him. I cannot tell you the number of Broward officers that privately and personally contacted me to tell me how disgusted they were and had been for a while at Scott Israel. And it was a disgust that had been growing after the, uh, the Fort Lauderdale airport shooting. And the response that he had to that because it was abysmal. So that, that, that was a problem. DeSantis removed Scott Israel. He removed the two bad Soros DAs. And the families cheered it. The left tried to reinstate all of them. And guess what? The Florida State Senate said, no, actually, this is perfectly within. He's ab- absolutely within his capacity and power and authority as governor to do so. And it was allowed to stand. You actually had gun control people fight to keep the people who helped made this this tragedy happen to keep them in those same positions of power. And Gavin Newsom shares a party and has defended those people. So you tell me who did more.